Hello, my name is Chris Wickland, I'm from Raw Satin, and today I'm going to tell you how you can go doorless for £250. Now, you can spend a lot of money on doorless, and what does doorless even mean? It means working without a digital audio workstation, i.e. something like GarageBand or Ableton Live, Logic or uh, Pro Tools, things like that. And on these on these doors, you can have synth plugins, and you can uh, you know have really expensive synths, but on a software platform which costs well peanuts in comparison to their uh, hardware counterparts. So moving from a door to doorless can be a rather daunting and seemingly expensive step. But I would like to say that I went from using a door to going doorless, and I have found it probably the most fun thing that I've done in a long time. Now, I used to be a full-time musician as a guitarist, so, and, uh, you know, for 15 years I was playing professionally, and you just can't beat sitting down with a real instrument in your lap, playing around with it, and it's normally in those little mistakes or those little things that you just noodle on that suddenly you come up with some really creative ideas. And I found that a door was just taking away my creativity. It was making me more into a music producer and less of a musician. And so I've gone back old school. Um, and this is the instrument I'd like to say that this is what I started with. Now, before you switch off and go, oh no, not the Electra IB2, this is actually quite a clever little machine. Now, from a doorless point of view, I started with this machine, okay, and I'll explain why it's a good place to start. Because inevitably, once you get into the whole doorless thing, you're just going to start buying more gear over a period of time. But what happens is, is that people buy lots of gear, but then they come up with a really bad workflow. And they have like two machines that could potentially be, um, if you like, the master clocks. And, and they end up with loads of gear and they don't quite know how to make it all work. I was very fortunate because I'd be honest with you, I didn't really know what I was doing at the time. But I started out with one of these. Now, what's cool about this is that this device on its own is an all-in-one music studio, if you like. So like each of these pads... You can assign uh, different synthesizers of the internal voices to each pad and down here. I mean, you can use all 16 pads for synths if you want to, but generally the bottom eight are used for drums. And then the top ones, you assign various synths. Now, what's great about this unit is that you've got all your effects are built in. So if, for example, you had 300 quid and you're like, okay, I'm going to go and buy myself some of uh, these Korg Volker units because they're nice and cheap. The problem that you're going to have is you might buy yourself a bass, an FM, a keys or what have you and a drum and a drum unit. But then how are you going to connect them all up? And then you'll notice that they sound quite harsh and dry. So then you have to buy a reverb unit, uh, unit and then you'll have to buy a little mixing desk and, and, and on it goes. And before you know it, you're, you're, you're looking at four or five hundred pounds just to get started. Whereas with one of these on the second hand market, you can pick these things up for 250 quid, which is really cheap off eBay. And this is an all in one doorless machine. But what's great about it is that when you start adding extra gear, this can become a MIDI sequencer, a 16 track MIDI sequencer, which you can program in each of these pads. You can program whatever you want to do. So say, for example, um, uh, I say, OK, I want that sound there and I've got my keyboard and I can program a, a melody or an idea in that from one beat to four beats, four bars, sorry, one bar to four bar. Store that. That's pad one done. I can do that and do that for that pad and that pad. But then what I can do is through these machines, I can assign MIDI channels to each one of my machines. Um, and so, then for that, instead of it being like an onboard sound, I can then send out and trigger maybe a sound off my FM or maybe a sound off my Roland TB3 or my SCO2 or my Roland DO5 or whatever. And uh, I assign all my external units to each one of these pads. So, in the beginning, this machine is great because it's the all in one for a doorless setup. And it's cheap, 250 quid. It's got all the built-in effects. It's got everything. You can do all your own mixing and everything on board this machine. But also, when you start buying more gear, you can actually just immediately start adding uh, your gear to this. So you can be using this on its own to start with, then on its own with one or two devices. And then you can use it just exclusively, if you like, as a doorless brain or, or, or the sequencer, which controls all your gear. So I've got quite a lot of gear. You may not be able to see it on the on the video because the ang angle of the camera, but I've got quite a lot of gear. And this thing controls everything. 
Um, and so I've built everything around this. Now I know there's lots of other good alternatives out there, Octatrack and things like that. But again, we're talking about budget. So this machine on the second hand market, it, for me, I think is really the best way to go. You can get this in a sample format or you can get this um, in the non sample format. This is the non sample format. I actually like to create everything myself from scratch. It's just how I am, a bit weird like that. And so this for me, as my first instrument started off, wrote all my initial songs on this, had loads of fun, and then I slowly started acquiring more gear. It's called gas gear acquisition syndrome. It's uh, it's a bit of a problem, um, but yet the irony is I've spent a lot of money now and a lot of gear. And here's the irony: I'm now I'm now trimming it right back because you see, sometimes having all the gear in the world is the worst thing for you. Having limitations can be the best thing because when you've got limitations. Your imagination will work wonders to work rounds um, or make up workarounds to work around those things that are just holding you back. And, and so something like this, this machine does have its weaknesses. Um, it's 24 polyphony and then within each pad, I think you can only uh, do up to sort of four voices, uh, sort of four notes in each in each pad. So in other words, if I was doing a chord, you can only do a four note chord in each pad. Nevertheless, it that's 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 obviously a weakness. But there's workarounds, you know, you can say like I'm going to do do four on that one and then I'll do some more chords on that one, more chords on that one. So you, you can multi-layer it. There's, 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 that you got it, you think thing, you think around things. And so for me, if I had to start out again or if I had to strip everything right back, because I need to tell you this right now, I'm never going back to a door. I'm never going back to doing everything on Pro Tools or Ableton Live. As fun as that was, it, it just took the fun of music out of it for me. Because I'm a musician, I like to play with my instruments. And sometimes it's those tweaking and playing that you you make a little mistake here and there and they become the best things ever. You know, they say, like, oh, what a great idea. That just happened by accident. Also, when you're jamming with these machines, they're great. And then when you get more machines and you start tweaking and messing about, you do more things, you know, uh, interacting with your instruments. And that's another thing to remember. With doorless setup, you are interacting with your instrument that's really quite key um, and so therefore you have that live kind of potential in it as well and you can play this machine live as well you can set the keyboard and you can just play it live it's not the best keyboard in the world to play but it works and it's functional so for me this is a real great place to start because this is better I personally think than a beat step pro well to a degree so a beat step pro and you probably see a picture of it come up on the screen uh, will only really give you two tracks of melody and then a drum track. I believe there's some out there that can do three tracks of melody and one drum track. But really, that's only three or four tracks. The thing that why people like the beat step is because at the back, you've got a lot more outs. Um, this has got quite a few things on the outs, like sync out, midi in, midi out, and sync in, etc. But the, um, the beat step has CV outs, which is great if you're into modular. But if you're into modular, you wouldn't be watching this video on how to go doorless budget because modular is a very expensive hobby indeed. So this is, for me, a great place to start. If you want to start doorless and you want to start today and you've got 250 quid in the bank, get one of these off eBay, either the sampler or the... Uh, um, or, or this one, which is just the E2, it's the regular one. But personally, I, I prefer this. And and then later on, as you grow more and amass more gear, this can then become your brain and your sequencer. Um, and because a lot of the equipment MIDI-wise, I know a lot of the Roland gear, for example, as you tweak these dials here, like your, your uh, resonance and, uh, and your EQ, etc., um, it will actually affect the other units because um, it's all MIDI sync so it's so you can still be playing this assign your instrument say like number three is my Roland TB3 I'll just click on that start messing about with with my knobs and dials here and it will affect the sounds on here so I can either do it on here or I can do it here so so you've got so many possibilities so bear that in mind 250 quid you won't need to buy yourself a mixing desk you won't need to buy yourself some on additional onboard effects this is a great place to start and as you build up more gear say you buy something else you've got an audio in so then you can still use from that one extra item all the onboard effects and all, all the EQing and everything else um, and then as you start to build up you, you can then add all the other stuff so simply put this for me has been a lifesaver this machine so I mean just even in its own sounds I'm just going to play something this is like a cover of a, a song called laser beam by oh uh, Tim Blake so it's a bit of a rubbish cover but there we go
but you know the internal sounds on this if you tweak it and play around with it you can get you can get a lot out of this you really can you know and you can pan this you can hear panning if you listen to this in stereo so I'm just having a little jam now I guess you know because uh, I haven't played this thing for ages So this is a four bar phrase, and then I'm gonna move it up across to another four bar phrase. With this machine as well, you can uh, link it together so it can literally just play its way through its own song. Now I like a lot of retro music, so all the drum sounds on this is very retro. <laughs> but this machine is uh, capable of doing drum and bass, um, all sorts of stuff, anything, anything and everything, dubstep, a lot of it, and it does it well. Okay, right. So, you know, obviously I'm going for all retro kits there, 808 and really old fashioned sounding synthesizers. Um, and this, this machine is great. I mean, you know, I know some people criticize it, but overall it's it, it has a few weaknesses. But overall, if you've got 250 quid and you want to go doorless right now, right today uh, and then start building gear, this is the best machine to have because it's cheap, it's powerful and it can become in time your MIDI sequencer to power and trigger all your other gear. So this is it really, that's your hot tip. How to go doorless for 250 quid or less because you can pick these up even cheaper if you're lucky. Um, this is the way to go. You buy one of these, you'll have loads of fun and you can record it directly onto your PC or whatever and then later on start buying more and more gear. But this is a great way to start. start. Because if you go down the Korg Volker range to, as your starting piece, you're gonna have to buy at least two or three and then a mixer and then some effects to actually make these things sound half decent they do sound decent and I, i've i've done a, a little ep called um the age of volker which showed how awesome these little things can be i know they look like toys but they are capable of quite a lot if you if you play with them so you know you've got some great equipment out there i love all the roland gear which you probably can't see on camera right now um, i got roland do5 the seo2 the tr09 um, and the roland tb3 i got i got loads of stuff but this is the center of everything everything revolves around this and i'm so thankful that i started off with this as a piece of kit because it's cheap it's inexpensive and it's powerful and it's got a lot of future proof to it as well so i hope that's been helpful and i'll see you again soon bye bye